we find ourselves in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another episode of the show, Deen and Dunya. My name is Rahma Mustafa Ghani, and as usual, I'm going to be your host. So I have with me today in the studio a special guest. She is the CEO of Mumtaz Wellness Center. Also, she is a um, therapist and also a psychologist. So I introduce to you Mrs. Hawa Bello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Then I have with me in the studio another beautiful sister. Mm -hmm. You know her, Halima Adiswana. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Okay, so as you know, this is a show where we talk about deep and important issues concerning women. And we try our best all the time to link topics, we discuss about them and try to find solutions. So today we have for you another interesting topic, which is intoxicants, anklets, and piercings. So, you know, generally, these things are some of the things that people in our generation now find themselves in. And most times they might say, it's just a trend, so I'll just do it, or maybe influence from friends, or all different, different reasons. So, you know, in Islam, we have like four sources of Sharia where some of the things are clearly stated in the Quran or in the Hadith of the Prophet While sometimes some things might not be stated, and then the ulama now would do consensus, which is the ijma, and then they can find rulings for some of the things. Then sometimes you might see that they compare one thing to another, which is clearly stated in the Quran or Sunnah, and then they might take the rulings to be the same. So now generally, whatever case it is, Allah says. Do not take yourselves and throw yourselves into destructions with your own hands. So now, basically about these things that we're going to talk about, intoxicants, amulets and piercings, you know, the scholars now establish some criteria on the prohibition of these things where it's maybe because it's going to be harmful to your health or to other people's health or it can be a waste of money or you know it's going to cloud your mind, or it's just going to cause things like it's going to take you out of your senses. So that's why they establish this criteria to know that okay, this is right, while this is not right. While well, some of them I won't even mention in the Quran. So, but what can you say about these things? Okay, um, even though initially when I had the topic, I was wondering what is the correlation between intoxicants, piercing, and anklets, because they are not really of the same thing. They are, you know, they have their own different worlds. So I think because of that, I'm going to take them one after the other. So if you ask me, um, what do I see about intoxicants? Although intoxicants is like um, a general name for a whole lot of things that um, intoxicate individuals, mm -hmm. things that affect their um, psychology, mm -hmm. you know, things that are psychoactive. Yes. So intoxicants are what we call psychoactive, that is, they change some things in your brain that makes you behave differently than normal, mm -hmm. you know, so those are intoxicants. And then um, anklets, just like the name um, states, is when you decorate your leg with mm -hmm. any kind of um, jewelry or something like that, and then piercing, you know, when you pierce any part of your body yeah. um, with any kind of jewelry and all that. So those are you know, those three things. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about intoxicants, okay? So, of course, there are 1,001 different types of intoxicants. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything that is psychoactive, mm -hmm. you know, will be placed on the uh, that kind of um, intoxicants kind of um, label. So, of course, we have the normal alcohol people take. Yes. We have Drugs. some concussions that people mix together. Mm -hmm. You know, the popular science student kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You mix this and mm -hmm. put that and put that. Some things naturally on their own are not intoxicants. Yes. So, for example, maggi on its own, if you eat it from now till tomorrow, will not intoxicate you. Mm -hmm. It's a normal thing to cook. Um, La like casera, if you drink it normally without mixing it with anything, it will intoxicate you, you're mm -hmm. fine. But when you now mix some things together, they 
make some kind of chemical reaction inside them that will now make it lead to you know intoxicating people. So if you mix lacasera with some other things, for example, you can get intoxicated. Mm -hmm. The same way if you mix maggi with some other things, even your normal Coca Cola. Yes, yeah, you know. So although we will not place these things under intoxicants. But we know for a fact that if you mix them with something else, they can intoxicate it. There's also something that does have the intoxicating ability, although you have to take it in really, really large quantity. Like a lot of people don't really know so much about it. Not neck. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you take it in. Well, it's very ruling about that. Yeah. So like in Saudi Arabia, for example, you can you're not allowed to sell not neck ordinarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they classify it under intoxicant. Although um, using it in small doses that people generally do use it, it does it. But because it has been classified under intoxicants, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, there's a ruling that says um, it shouldn't be sold or used. So some people would generally not, not use it. So there are a whole lot of things. Except, you know, we can't have an exhaustive list of intoxicants. There are some drugs that you would ordinarily use and then it will intoxicate you, even though they are normal medications that you would use normally mm -hmm. um, for a normal um, health mm -hmm. problem, mm -hmm. exactly, like your normal cough syrup, mm -hmm. like your normal sleeping medications, you know, but when you misuse these drugs, we call them misuse because mm -hmm. you're not really using them for what they were meant to be used for. So for example, um, codeine, Mm -hmm. A cough syrup, yes. you know, so maybe penicillin with codeine, for example, mm -hmm. is supposed to be used five meal, um, morning, afternoon, and night, for example, mm -hmm. for cough. Mm -hmm. And then you happen not to have cough, mm -hmm. and you decide to take thirty meal morning, afternoon, and night. Mm -hmm. You are not using it for what it was meant to be used for, mm -hmm. and you are not um, using it at the dosage that was that is supposed to be prescribed for you. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's misused. And it also has the intoxicating ability that is a side effect. Ordinarily, some people will use five meal or yeah. benadine with codeine and they will feel drowsy all day. Yeah. So yeah. one of the rules is not to use cough syrup that has that constituent in it and drive. Mm -hmm. Or use it and use machinery because mm -hmm. they know that it has a side effect of being drowsy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. something ordinarily that will make you drowsy, you now take them in large doses. You know, it automatically changes um, the whole system. And actually, it brings brings me to the um, concept of people saying intoxicants are things that only you know affect your your mental or physical control your senses. Mm -hmm. Because, like you're saying, this is codeine now. When people say they only take it as depressants, just want to. Um, is it what they call? No, 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 not people to, to like calm their mind. Exactly, yeah. calm their yeah. mind. So they mm -hmm. feel like, well, that's not supposed to be a drug or something. It's just for me to relax, mm -hmm. for me to have a good sleep, a longer mm -hmm. sleep. Mm -hmm. But they're actually intoxicants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear people say that actually. However, it's a drug. Yes. Whether it's a depressant, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, it hallucinates you, mm -hmm. whatever it is that it does. Is still a psychoactive drug. Anything that would work on your mental and physical control. <laughs> that, would, that would make it change its activity. Mm -hmm. So let me go a little bit deeper. In the brain, we have neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. So these neurotransmitters are the things that they are like messengers. We call them mm -hmm. like messengers. So they are the ones who, which will tell one part of the body what, what part of the brain what to do mm -hmm. and what not to do. So we have the common ones that people would do usually hear about is the dopamine, the serotonin, mm -hmm. and all that, the GABA and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, these neurotransmitters, there's a normal quantity that you would find normally in the brain when you do normal things. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you eat food, and the food is very, very nice, as in you like the food, your brain will release some neurotransmitters mm -hmm. to let you feel that sensation of, oh, this food is yummy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I going to release it. You know, so you feel that happy state. Mm -hmm. Now there are some things that you also do that it will reduce the state you feel. Mm -hmm. You know, so when people now, if this is activity going on in the brain normally. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. it's a normal activity going mm -hmm. on. Now when you take something 
to now either enhance this activity mm. or reduce mm. this activity. Yes. Okay. You know, there is a psychoactive activity that is happening in the brain. Mm -hmm. And so if I take codeine and I said it's a depressant, mm -hmm. okay, I'm actually reducing something that is normally supposed to be found in the brain mm -hmm. at that particular point. Yes. So I'm blocking some neurotransmitters from doing their work. Mm -hmm. Or I am releasing some neurotransmitters to do their work excessively. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. So yes. it's still a drug. It's still a psychoactive drug because it's having an effect in the brain. Mm -hmm. You know. So any of those will be deceiving ourselves. So okay, now let's bring the same thing to alcohol. Mm -hmm. Alcohol ordinarily is an antidepressant. Why? Did you know that? Yes. Why? You know, uh -huh. so it's supposed to take, you're supposed to take it and they feel come. That's why you hear some people say, well, I want to forget all my worries yes. and my sorrows. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> so they will take alcohol. Some yes. people will not be able to sleep if they don't take alcohol. Yes. Because they need it to put them in that depressed state. That's why we call it an antidepressant. Yeah. That's why, sorry, that's why we call it a depressant, yes. not an Antidepressant is medication for depression. Sorry. Yes. So that's why we call it a depressant. Because it will ordinarily make you feel that calm, you see yes. kind of thing. Yes. And then, and you also see that that's why some people, when they are drunk, they lose control of their, of their mouths. Mm -hmm. No inhibition. Mm -hmm. The inhibition they would ordinarily have to say, hmm, you can you call, can you call. When they, they can't because they can't control it. Because it has put them in that. Like she said, floating <laughs> You know. So, would you now say that alcohol is not an intoxicant because it's a depressant? Well, it is. Yeah. Well, another thing that another another uh, thing that makes people want to kind of give excuses mm -hmm. for drugs is mm -hmm. because was, some of them were not specified in the Quran. I mean, coding ah. is not the Quran. Um, what about the other ones? There are many other ones apart from alcohol, which was. Strictly stated. Yeah, now we're not stated in the Quran. Now I'm talking about cigarettes. You find um, this very like in the I won't say a particular a particular group of people in Nigeria, but then these people are very believing in the Quran. They follow it like everything. But then when it comes to the cigarette part, they're like, well, it's not in the Quran. It's not supposed to be a drug. It's just smoke. Okay. So it should be allowed. I think you actually talk about this. Things not being mentioned in the Quran. And then yeah, I was actually going to tell her about it. So now, talking about the Islamic perspective, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, clearly the one that was mentioned in the Quran is a common yes, mm -hmm. yeah, alcohol. Mm -hmm. So, but, but then, even that one, mm -hmm. yeah, we know that it's not easy to 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 get, uh, you know, addicted to something and then mm -hmm. you know just get out of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why Allah also. Um, followed some phases or steps mm -hmm. in buying alcohol. Mm -hmm. So he mentions in the Quran, well, at first, he just said uh, people have been asking the Prophet about gambling and mm -hmm. alcohol. Mm -hmm. He said, yes, I look at the Khamri or Maisir. Then he said, yeah, even though there is benefit in it, mm -hmm. but then the harm is more than the benefit, the benefit right? right? Mm -hmm. So then uh, the second phase was when the Imam, one Imam was leading prayer, mm -hmm. but then he was under the influence of alcohol mm -hmm. and then he couldn't even read the Quran properly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then Allah still revealed another verse mm -hmm. and he said, do not approach, come, prayer. approach prayer when you are under the influence of alcohol. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Then the third phase was when, uh, you know, after the, third, the second one, people now, okay, reduce taking alcohol and then maybe it's going to be after Isha prayer, mm -hmm. but then they sit in groups and they'll be talking and they'll be doing poetry between themselves. Yes, the Arabs actually, they, they exactly. value um, alcohol, they even do poetry about that. Exactly. So yes. one of them now offended another mm -hmm. from a different tribe and they started having a lot of chaos and someone was hit and all that and then mm -hmm. totally now Allah banned alcohol. Yes, so scholars say the word intoxicant or alcohol is just like a general word mm -hmm. for anything that covers your mind or takes you out of your senses. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if it is a drug or anything. Mm -hmm. But for drugs, they are not mentioned. That's why I mentioned Ijma or Kokias. Yes. So, but even back then, some of these things like hemp, like cannabis, like poppy, mm -hmm. they were used as uh, medicinal stuff yes. mm -hmm. for therapeutic purposes. We have, we have our guests, she might tell us about that. Mm -hmm. 
So I know that's what yeah she said. Some people take it as an excuse to change all these things like drugs. Mm -hmm. And even that time, all of these things like him were actually eaten and not smoked. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't know if that is the difference mm -hmm. while people get intoxicated. Mm -hmm. You see, alhamdulillah, you started with the sources of Sharia law. Mm -hmm. okay. And even though in the Quran, what was specifically talked about, which a lot of people refer to alcohol, mm -hmm. is you know, intoxicants in that sense. But like you said, we have all the sources of law. Mm -hmm. We have the Hadith, mm -hmm. we have the Hijma. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were mentioning the intro, you said, Scholars say people shouldn't use something mm. if it is detrimental to, to your, your health. health. Mm. Now, one of the rules in the Quran is that you should not commit suicide. Mm. Mm. If you commit suicide, we all know the common mm. application. You should not use your hand to put yourself in room. Yes. You should not use your hand to intentionally destroy yourself. If it's unintentional, Allah sees the mind mm. and then He can. Always overlook all these things. Yes. But when it is intentional, then there is a problem. Mm. Now, on the face of it, when, okay, so there's something we say that if cigarettes mm. was first found now, as in they've not found cigarettes before, they've not found tobacco before, okay. nicotine has never been found before. Okay. So they just found it now. Okay. With the level of education that's available now for people to be able to know the constituents of something, mm -hmm. if they just found cigarette now, it will be bound, it will be banned immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we now know the harmful effects yes. of nicotine, yes. which is the main ingredient that is found in cigarettes. Yes, according to mm -hmm. a research I was saying, there's this Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Mm -hmm. He referred to as the wines as hum, mm -hmm. and then these other um, smokes, the cigarettes, the hemp, and all of that mm -hmm. as hashish. Mm -hmm. so he said the karma actually does something to your senses and your religion, mm -hmm. but worse than that is what the hashish does to you because it actually mm -hmm. destroys your body alongside destroying your religion. Exactly, exactly. So, in fact, when I tell people that you know that cigarettes is one of the worst drugs you can take, mm -hmm. you're like, hmm. Mm -hmm. And I say yes, mm -hmm. because cigarettes does not only destroy one part of your body. Mm -hmm. Cigarettes destroys every single organ in your body. Mm -hmm. When you smoke, when you cough, you are in, in, you are only intentionally killing yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So even though it's not an intoxicant in the sense of what alcohol will do. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's still a psychoactive drug because it will still do something in the brain. That is why it becomes addictive yes. anyway. Yes. You can only get addicted to something that does something yes. to you in your brain. Yes. If it's only in your body, you, you may yes. not want to. You but now, people hide the, uh, behind the fact that shisha and the rest have flavors mm -hmm. and it's not like cigarettes, so they feel it's smoking. That was yeah. why I said nicotine, which is the main active ingredient in cigarettes, is the problem. Mm -hmm. The same nicotine is found in shisha. Mm -hmm. In fact, in more higher concentration, yeah. in some flavors, mm -hmm. just like your pen, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, people take um, e-cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, in the form of pen. Okay, yes, 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 yes. That even mm -hmm. has more, some of it. Some of the brands, anyway, mm -hmm. have more nicotine in it than your usual cigarette mm -hmm. stick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Because that nicotine, which is the main problem, is found in all these things. Mm -hmm. That is why we are against the fact that people will use that as an alternative mm -hmm. for cigarettes or other things. Because it's like you are jumping from from frying pan to fire pan. Mm -hmm. you, know? mm -hmm. you are leaving one for another kind of attention. And it's clearly stated that you should abstain from anything that will yeah. cause you exactly that will cause you harm. You see, now with the progress in science, you can actually look at the lungs of someone who is smoking cigarette and look at the lungs of someone who is not smoking and see the big difference. And you can like see, you know, your lung function is not exactly. You are, I don't know how to, is it consciously or consciously killing yourself? You can open the stomach of someone who does 
cigarette mm-hmm. and open the stomach of someone who doesn't seem to see the difference. You know. So even though these things were not mentioned categorically, mm. we can understand the implication now. Mm-hmm. In those days, when people didn't even know, you could ignore their ignorance, yes. if that makes sense. But now that we all know, mm-hmm. you know, we know that this is not something we can ignore. Yes. And so it's a whole lot of other drugs that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. These things destroy mm-hmm. your body. Yes. This thing destroys your soul. Mm-hmm. This thing destroys your mind. It destroys you spiritually. It destroys you. It you know the thing is one of the other criteria one of the criteria that we use to even look to test addiction Mm -hmm. is the way it affects your social relationship. Mm -hmm. So it destroys your family, Mm -hmm. it destroys your children, Mm -hmm. it destroys your friends, Mm -hmm. you know, it destroys those relationships. Yes. Which are very beneficial to you. Why would one want to Continue. Now, this is getting interesting. Dear viewers, it's still the show with Dean and Dinia, and the topic is intoxicants, anklets, and piercings. We'll now take a short break and we'll be back, inshallah. Stay tuned. In the 21st century, you are not limited by your geographic location. With an effective use of media and the internet, you can speak to billions of potential customers at a go. Invest in advert and broadcast generate brand loyalty and company traffic. iMedia Communications is here to help you produce and broadcast promotional videos for your businesses fashioned just for you. We offer services and video production to clients from startups to businesses, NGOs and government agencies with a focus on advertising, marketing and documenting. Contact us today to keep your business at the top of your customer's mind attract new people and keep them up to date on your products and services. We are at the forefront of event coverage and live stream of your special occasions. When you think of video production and live stream, think iMedia. Contact us at www.imedianigeria.net or info at imedianigeria.net or dial 0810-450-8155 or 0816-681-5377 At iMedia Communications, we don't give excuses. We simply get the job done in style. Dear viewers, it's still the show Dean and Dinia and the topic is intoxicants, anklets and piercings. So, we were talking about intoxicants. Now let's move to anklets and piercings. So, you know, um, these things actually, even the rulings in Islam are not straightforward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but then some scholars took a verse from the Quran that says, um, it was actually talking about women, and it says, that they shouldn't stamp their feet so that whatever they're wearing of adornment Mm -hmm. is going to be revealed. Mm -hmm. So that was talking about maybe some accessories like anklets, maybe some people wear one or two, or actually it makes Mm sounds. And so, but some of the scholars said, the ruling is based on the action, that is the sound, and Mm -hmm. not the anklet in particular. Mm -hmm. But then in some societies, it's considered that uh, these things are used by people who are immoral Mm -hmm. or evildoers and all that, and so that's why they say it's prohibited Mm -hmm. or if the purpose with which you use it for is maybe it's going to expose your aura or Mm -hmm. someone's going to see your aura it's not or it's for Mm non-mahram not for your husband or something so they feel it's haram Mm -hmm. so what can you say about that interesting (laughs) okay um anklets and piercings taken from the Quran verse of you know do not display your adornments and all and then just like you have said the noise and all I personally don't see the piercings and the anklets as the problem mm, okay I see the showing of it to the public as the pro- as the problem okay so mm. there are 1001 anklets you can wear that doesn't make noise mm-hmm. beads are worn as anklets and they don't make any noise and then you're wearing your socks Mm. You're wearing your clothing that is covering everything. Yeah. No one knows you are putting an anklet mm. except your family. Mm. 
so if you can actually protect the the haram parts mm. which is what you have mentioned on you know exposing it to non more haram making a show of it that everybody by knows you're wearing this thing by yeah. stamping or by showing people like you know look at my leg or look mm -hmm. at my it's nose. actually during the jahiliya period women actually do that to call mm -hmm. men's attention yeah, exactly yeah. so but now you know knowing that you're not going to be doing that you know people women are allowed to beautify themselves as they want mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. but they should make sure that they, they, they fulfill the rules and mm -hmm. regulations that do not make them go outside of the boundaries yeah. so for me like for example if you use one one link chain it won't make noise yeah. mm. if you use beads beads it won't make noise mm. whatever it is you use as far as it's concealed and it's only your family that can say it, it's fine now for piercing there's another rule that comes in which you didn't mention is also that not to Put yourself in harm way. Yes. Yeah. There are some kind of piercings that I see, and I'm wondering, how, how you did that? you do that? <laughs> you know, what did you have to go under anesthesia to get that yes. done? Like, you know, yes. I'm sure you went through surgery or yes. something. Yes. You see, when people pierce, you know, I don't their even tongue, want, their tongue, you yeah. know, what? So actually, so, some research is here. Yeah, some researches show that even just the lips or the tongue. Mm. There is, um, you know, negative effect, mm -hmm. health effect. Exactly. Yeah. So if you if it's not properly done, you could go into exactly. infect. You could, you could get infected. You yes. could have abscess and all that. So for me, I'm like, oh, well, no matter the beauty, the would you pain. want to put yourself into so much pain and trauma right. and all? Right. But you know, every action shall be judged according to intention. Mm -hmm. If your intention is right by Allah. Allah is the only one who can judge. Mm -hmm. Now, if your intention is not right by Him, Allah is the only one that can judge, you know. Mm -hmm. But whatever piercing you're doing, since it's an adornment, since it's a beautification, make sure that you don't kind of expose it to people who are not supposed to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's ear piercing, nose piercing, belly button, all sorts of ones that are not so painful mm -hmm. you know uh-huh you know people so for me i don't see anklets and piercings as a problem except if like i said you go outside of those rules and except i've not come across any any um any ruling mm -hmm. that it's bam you can't use it at all mm -hmm. yeah i've not seen yeah, but that's why, that's why, you know, um, they say it's, it's normal, you can do it in the normal places, mm -hmm. like the ears, you, mm -hmm. the, the nose, because even during the time of the prophet, mm -hmm. women normally do that. Mm -hmm. So, but then um, they actually uh, said, okay, if it is going to harm you, yes, mm -hmm. or if you're going to imitate the evildoers or mm -hmm. the kafar and all that. Yeah, but I think that's permissible. where intention comes in. Because yes. if I, even piercing ears, more than the more than the the, the act of doing it, it is the yeah, action. It's the intention, yes. Actions and intent. What you action. do with it. Exactly. I mean calling men's attention with it is already bad. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want to represent the particular hippie yeah, hop exactly. kind of uh -huh. yes. so, yeah. or making a fashion act. statement. It's it's about, about, about the intention. Actions and intention. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's overdoing it too should actually be, be talked about. Because you mm -hmm. see some people who have pierced the whole ears. I mean, yeah. you can pierce one or two, but why do you have to go like pam pam, like all round? Mm -hmm. Then you see nose piercings, you see the tongue, you see here. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the end of the day, it does. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be for adornment. At the end of the day, it's, it's you're weird. looking like a weird person. <laughs> you see, when you were saying it, I was smiling. <laughs> because the question I ask is, who detects when it's too much? Okay, when it's well, too much is a subjective thing. Yeah. Having only one may be too much for me. Okay, okay. And it's okay for you. Okay. Yeah. Having three may be out of the way for me. But how about having it on the face? Is that not too much? Who says but it's too some much? People, yeah. Too much is a subjective thing. Just like when you eat food, one wrap of pandediam may be too much for one person. Yeah. Another person will eat three inside their tummy and it's not too much. So it's a subjective thing. So for somebody having it all around the air, it's not it's nothing. not too much it's, okay. in fact it's you know so i don't and because that is also not a criteria mm -hmm. that i know of in the sharia mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm I'm careful for us not to put that as a criteria to say. Well, it's I too think much. Yeah. my overdoing would mean already causing yourself harm or something. I'm if okay. you put it everywhere and it's not paining you, then that's fine. Disfiguring. That's, that's fine. fine. How about if if it's disfiguring your skin or maybe if I don't see that disfiguring or yeah. something. Uh, if it develops well, more and I decide to remove it, like, yeah, it depends on the person. Yeah. It okay, depends well. on, and if I cover it, I would even know there's a mole there. So. Well, the face, <laughs> you cover the faces. People cover their faces. <laughs> yeah. Well, the ones that do it now don't cover their faces. The ones who have it here, the ones who have it. On a the lot tongue. of people who have it there cover their faces. So trust, trust me. Yeah. People so, they cover it. Okay. Ah. Sometimes I think it also it's uh, based on the culture or the society. Exactly. exactly. It's normal yes, to start, some and to some mm, it's not normal. normal. Exactly. Yeah, and and so. That's why it's advisable for people to not judge people based on what they see. Exactly. Or based on just ethnicity or something. Because it's a subjective on, thing. Yeah, until Look, you have if a you see the Somalians. Yes. They do a lot of piercing. You'll be like, really? these people from the bush. I see. It's just normal for them. Maybe. And it's normal for yeah. them. Even from birth, they, they do that. But the African culture tends to see it as something the prostitutes. Do. That's but the thing. The over athletes. there, it's not the it's prostitute. Normal, yeah. that exactly, it's normal. Exactly. Even the septum piercing mm -hmm. is normal mm -hmm. for them. It's mm -hmm. not anything. So culturally, if you if a Somalian were to come to Nigeria now and then you're judging you her, her yeah. you'll be the yeah. one seeing him. Yeah. Not not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So dear viewers, it's still the show Dean and Dinya, and the topic is intoxicants, anklets, and piercing. So we have our guest, and now we'll ask her to give us her advice about mm -hmm. these things. So what do you think? <laughs> I think we've said it, um, you know. Um, do whatever you want to do, as far as it's halal, mm. and as far as you've, you know, made sure that your intention is good. Mm. So you can go ahead with your piercings, go ahead with your anklets. How about intoxicants? But for intoxicants, if you've never taken intoxicant before, I plead with you, don't mm. even try. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're taking and you already have an issue with it, mm -hmm. seek treatment. Mm -hmm. okay. And the earlier you seek treatment, the better. Mm -hmm. Because addiction has levels. Mm -hmm. There's the mild addiction, there's the moderate, and there's the severe. Mm -hmm. Now, usually when it has gotten to the severe stage, it's always pretty difficult to treat, even though it's treatable. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it's a chronic mental health issue. Mm -hmm. Like when you have a chronic physical health issue like um, diabetes or hypertension, you know, something that you have to constantly be watchful mm -hmm. of uh, treatment. So the earlier you seek treatment, yeah. mm -hmm. the better for you. Okay. Now, you can even start with self-help mm -hmm. treatment. There are a whole lot of smoking cessation books, mm -hmm. alcohol addiction books, you know, there are a whole lot of books that you can read to help you. And then you can now seek a professional Mm. to consolidate your efforts. So these days, thank God, we are having a whole lot of um, coaches, counselors mm. yeah. that are, can even help you. Now, yeah. if it's now a moderate or severe addiction, then you definitely want to see a specialized professional like a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist or something. Because sometimes, for some people, they, won't be, they will need to be put on medication mm. to help them against their addiction. Yeah. So for me, I would say, if you're using intoxicant, stop cold turkey. When I mean stop cold turkey, it's just stop. But if mm. you find it difficult, so like people who use cigarettes, for example, can stop cold turkey, depending on the kind of the, the number. Mm -hmm. So you can just decide to say, okay, from today I'm not using anymore. And mm -hmm. they just stop. A whole lot of people. How about the withdrawal symptoms? They will have it, but they'll, they'll be fine. They will okay. cope with it. They'll okay. be fine. So some people can't stop cold turkey. Now, if you stop cold turkey, and you're finding it very difficult. So your withdrawal is a problem. Your craving is becoming something else. You're having tolerance issues and all that. Then seek professional, seek professional help. help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, for me, anklets and um, piercings, I'd say it's good. I don't have anything against it, but I still believe moderation is key. I mean, it is clearly stated that you should not do anything that puts you in ruin or puts you in harm's way. So, mm -hmm. for me, moderation is key. As long as it doesn't affect you, you can go ahead. But for intoxicants, it's a no-no. It's mm -hmm. clearly stated in the Quran and mm -hmm. supported by the Hadith and all other rulings that anything that affects your physical, your, your mental control of yourself mm -hmm. is highly prohibited. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, um, but I think another important thing is... You know, sometimes people are just out there to tell you the rulings 
or to like abuse people who do that or shame them or maybe sometimes even stigmatization. Mm. We know that people that, that are addicted to some things or that are doing some things that are bad, it's not easy for them to leave that thing. Mm -hmm. Or they, they, maybe, maybe they're even trying mm -hmm. and people are just there to judge them. Mm -hmm. That is not right. Whatever mm -hmm. you have to do about this, just know that Allah is test, it can test anyone. Mm -hmm. This is a test and you're a potential. Mm -hmm. Allah can just turn everything around and test you too. Mm -hmm. So please, whatever you can do about it, just encourage them, mm -hmm. help them out, or even pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because anyone who does this thing and is trying to get out of it, Allah says, Whatever you do, whenever you transgress any limit, any boundaries of Allah, Allah is always there to welcome you mm -hmm. if you are going to repent sincerely. Mm -hmm. So may Allah help us all and guide us all. You can join us in the comment section for your opinions, your topics that you might want us to discuss, and mm -hmm. also some questions if you have. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, we'll continue to bring interesting topics for you. My name is Rahma Mustafa Ghani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa a technically faulty events coverage is no value for money. A crispy, clear, high-definition production, live stream or online conference is our business. iMedia Communications, the final frontier for video production services.